Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Park and I'm going to walk you through Alice Monroe's Boys and Girls um, and how you can write about it for an essay. So let's start with some basics. In terms of literary analysis, a couple things to remember. Um, one, the text does not provide us with answers, right? Instead, it poses questions. So all the stuff that we're going to be reading um, throughout the semester, um, regardless of, of your of your class, um, there are no, we're not reading fairy tales or fables, so no lessons to be learned, no morals of the story, right? We are active readers, not passive readers. And so when we actively read, we engage in close readings and we work with the text to develop an interpretation, right? So it's not an antagonistic relationship, it's a collaborative relationship with the text. Um, we support our interpretation, which is our what we think the story means. Um, we articulate that in our thesis statements. Um, and we support that with evidence from the text. So we use direct quotes, right, that we analyze um, in our body paragraphs, right? And just as a reminder, analysis is breaking down a text into its parts to understand it as a whole, right? So when we move to um, Alice Monroe's story, a couple things to keep in mind with this particular short, short, short story. Um, narration, the central conflicts, and setting, right? So the narration is really important because it's first person narration. We're in our narrator's head, right? It's how she sees the world, how she understands that relationship, and how she understands those conflicts, right? How she articulates them. So that's going to tell us a lot um, about not only the conflicts, but also the larger issues at stake um, in the text. Um, so those conflicts, right, they're primarily the external conflicts are with family members. Think her mom, her dad, her brother, and her grandmother, um, although her grandmother's mentioned a little bit, there's still conflict there. Um, so that's important to keep in mind. Um, and that speaks to uh, the conflict, the conflicts that um, are about gender, right? So as I've noted here, those conflicts um, are rooted in larger ideas about kind of standard traditional uh, gender norms, right? Um, and the setting is also important because there's a clear division between the house um, and the farm, right? And so just physically and ideologically how those are separate. And that actually speaks to those gender conflicts, which we're going to talk about. So when we write about the short story, one clear way to approach it is to focus on the representation of gender roles and the effects of imposing these gender roles on young women like our narrator um, in Western cultures. And we're focusing on Western cultures because this text is set um, in that space. So when we talk about gender, um, we can think about a couple key concepts here. So in the Western cultures, like think the United States, um, Canada, you know, UK, the division of labor has often um, been developed along gender lines. So if we think about public labor, so agriculture, industry, white collar jobs, going out into the world to go to a job and private labor, that that's private labor within the home. So domestic, right? So cooking, laundry, cleaning, childcare, all of those things that happen within the home, that division of labor has happened along gender lines. And the assumptions about gender that drive that division are rooted in this idea that gender is a social construct, right? So we can think of this assumption, this example that I have here about this assumption that women are naturally better cooks. Well, that's false because cooking is a learned skill, right? And that, but that idea has driven this division of labor that women are naturally better at taking care of the home. Well, that's not true at all. Those are learned skills, right? Um, and in fact, and when we talk about cooking, the culinary profession as a profession, so public labor, is dominated by men, right? So again, it's a learned skill. So those assumptions are driven by this idea that gender is a social construct. So that's one way we can think about this text. So in terms of this idea about gender as a social construct, one um, place to start is with 20th century French philosopher Simone de Beauvoir, who famously argued that one is not born a woman, but one becomes a woman. And a way to understand this is to consider the concept that um, women, females, so that's females are designated, that's sex versus gender, right, women, um, through a process um, whereby they acquire feminine traits and learned feminine behavior, um, those are acquired and learned, right? Those aren't inherent or biologically inherent, right? They're learned concepts through culture, right? Um, and various ways that that happens. Um, masculinity and femininity are taught, right? It's nurture, not nature, right? Those ideas. Um, and social forces, um, have a causal role in bringing gendered individuals into existence. So it's causing, right? So these social ideas about what gender means, whether it's in Western culture, it can mean something different in Japan, it can mean something different in uh, Nigeria, right? Those are all learned behaviors, right? Um, and Kate Millett, for example, who's a second wave feminist scholar, argues that gender is the sum total of the parents, the peers, and the culture's notions of what is appropriate in each gender. So again, those are all taught and um, passed down, right? 
So if we think about that idea, um, it also, there's the effects of that, right? So those traditional gender norms can be really oppressive, um, specifically for women, because they reinforce women's subordination. And one of the questions we can ask about our short story is, do we see that in the text for our narrator, right? And because these are learned behaviors, right, that they're taught and passed down and learned, they can be unlearned as well to create a more equitable society. So that's one of the questions maybe that Monroe is raising, right? Can these be unlearned and what are the effects of that? Um, and social learning scholars have also pointed out how parents treat their male, female children differently. We see this across culture all the time, right? So boys wear blue and girls wear pink. Well, up until about the 20s or 30s, um, 1920s and 30s, um, pink was actually considered a very masculine color and that just changed kind of arbitrarily, right? So we learn, we, children also learn from the world around them, books, TV, all that stuff, right? So we have to think about um, that as well. So when we look at our short story, we need to consider kind of the stuff we just talked about, right? And look at how our narrator engages with those individuals in her world and also um, of the world outside her family, right? So how does the narrator respond, respond to the clear division of labor? Um, how she responds to her brother, for example, and how her parents treat her brother differently? I mean, how he responds to being asked to do particular forms of labor? Um, how does the narrator think about and feel about um, how she's treated by her parents, whether it's her mom um, and her dad individually or them as a, as a parental unit, right? And then how does she see herself in relationship to these kind of hegemonic or traditional gender roles, right? Those are some questions we can ask. So once we kind of think about those questions, we can start to develop our interpretation, write our thesis, and then look for quotes in the st short story that support that argument, right? And I've provided a, a, a quote from the story here um, that you can kind of ask some questions about, right? And this is a very clear representation of how she starts to perceive her relationship to gender and those traditional gender roles. Um, so what words or phrases do you notice? Um, what do they show? What do we learn about the narrator? How she sees herself? How does she see the world around her? And also to what end? So in other words, what does your close reading of that quote tell us about the world of the text, her world, right? Her family, her, um, the setting, right? Um, and the world outside the text. So our world now, um, the sign of sociopolitical context um, in which the story exists, right? So as you think about writing about the story, think about the narration and conflicts and setting, those basic concepts of gender as a social construct, um, and then asking those questions, how we can approach this um, writing about this text, um, thinking about gender. And I've provided some secondary sources here, and if you have more questions, you can certainly contact me. Um, this is a great short story to write about um, with regards to gender and kind of exploring um, gender in kind of those traditional ways, but also the effects of that and even thinking about what that means now in our contemporary American culture.